Hi everyone. Thank you for joining Teledyne LaCroix today for our first oscilloscope coffee break webinar of 2023 with presenter John Schechter. Today's topic is all about oscilloscope resolution. Just a few housekeeping items before we begin. To the right of your screen, you'll see the GoToWebinar control panel. Please use the questions section to submit questions during today's presentation. We'll hold Q&A at the end of the webinar to keep us running on time. You'll also see a section called, or excuse me, labeled handouts. In here, you will find a copy of today's slides and some helpful documents. This webinar is being recorded. A link to the recording and slides will be sent to you automatically via email within the next 24 to 48 hours. Finally, as you exit today's webinar, a short survey will pop up. If you could take a moment and answer these five questions, we would appreciate it. It allows us to continue to provide valuable content to you. So just a little bit about us. LaCroix uh, was founded by Alabama native Walter LaCroix in 1964. Our corporate headquarters is in Chestnut Ridge, New York, but we have sales and service offices all across the United States, as well as the rest of the world. We manufacture um, oscilloscopes, vertical analyzers, and related TNM equipment. In 2012, we were acquired by Teledyne Technologies and renamed Teledyne LaCroix. Thanks for joining us today. I'm now going to turn things over to John to begin. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you everybody for joining today's webinar. My name is John, and I'm the product marketing engineer here at Teledyne LaCroix, and I will be the presenter for this year's Coffee Break webinar series. So today is part one of a 12-part webinar series on oscilloscope basics. We'll be covering what is oscilloscope resolution today. And you can see I listed the first six topics here in the webinar series on this slide, which occur on the last Thursday of every month. So you can be sure to register for all of them ahead of time using this link right here. But without further ado, let's get into part one of what is oscilloscope resolution. A little background here. So most oscilloscopes used to all be 8 bits. And so users didn't really have to consider how oscilloscope resolution was impacting their measurements because 8 bits was all there was. But in recent years, oscilloscope manufacturers have been making a wide variety of high resolution claims similar to what you see here on this slide. And so it's become increasingly important to know what oscilloscope resolution is and how it's impacting your measurements. So I want to equate oscilloscope resolution to a more familiar example. Everybody uh, is familiar with low resolution and high image uh, resolution images taken with a camera. And so if we were to look at two images of a flower, one that was low resolution and one that was high resolution, if I didn't really care about the quality of the flower, the image detail, then it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm looking at a low resolution image or a high resolution one. They look fairly similar. But if that flower detail was important for me and I was to zoom in on those images, you could see that with the low resolution one, you could barely tell that it's a flower. And with the high resolution image, you get, you're getting a lot more image detail. You get a way better representation of what the flower actually looks like. And so it's a similar story with oscilloscope resolution. If we had an 8-bit oscilloscope and we had a 12-bit oscilloscope, and all we really cared about was verifying that that signal exists, then it doesn't matter if you're using an 8-bit oscilloscope or a 12-bit one, they look fairly similar. But let's say debugging a signal was important for our circuit design, and we wanted to zoom into this portion that I've highlighted in yellow on the signals. You could see that with the 8-bit oscilloscope, you could barely tell the difference between the signal and the noise riding on it, Whereas with the 12-bit one, you can see a lot more signal detail and you get a way better representation of what the signal actually looks like. And so this good representation of what the signal actually looks like is called vertical resolution. And it uh, refers to the oscilloscope's ability to represent the amplitude or voltage detail of the signal. So this y-axis right here. Essentially, it's saying how small of a voltage can be seen in detail. There's also timing resolution, which is related to sample rate. That's super important to uh, view signal detail, but we'll leave that for webinar four in April. For now, let's just focus on vertical resolution and the amplitude detail it provides. 
So how is an oscilloscope utilizing its vertical resolution to capture the amplitude detail? It all starts with an analog signal that's entering the oscilloscope. Analog signals, by definition, have continuously changing physical properties. What this means is that voltage is never a discrete value. It's cyclically changing proportionally to the alternating current. And so the way that an oscilloscope captures this continuously changing uh, wave is by doing something called quantizing the signal using its analog to digital converter. I know that's a mouthful. Basically what that means is that the oscilloscope is taking samples of the amplitude of the analog signal. And the thing to note here is that the vertical position of the voltage or amplitude is limited to a finite set of vertical levels that are called quantization levels. Okay, so they can only sit on the quantization levels. And the amount of quantization levels is directly proportional to the resolution in the oscilloscope. So let's take a look at how an oscilloscope's ADC digitally samples a signal and then assigns it a quantization level that's associated with its resolution. So let's say we had a signal, an analog signal, that has a period of four seconds, okay? And we wanted to sample that signal at a rate of four samples per second. So what that would mean is we have a sample every quarter second for four seconds, we would have a total of 16 samples. And ideally, those samples fall right on the analog signal. But like I said before, um, the vertical position of the sample points can only be digitized or quantized on the quantization levels. And that's dictated by the amount of resolution. So if you see here in my title, I have n bits of resolution results in two to the n quantization levels. So if we were to look at two bits of resolution, we would have two to the two quantization levels or four quantization levels. And if we were to spread out those quantization levels over the voltage range of the signal, we would get that those four quantization levels occur every two and a half volts. Okay, so these blue dashed lines represent the four quantization levels. And if the analog to digital converter were to start, start sampling, so we have four samples per second, the first sample will be at 0.25 seconds. Ideally, the sample would fall right here on this blue dot, but we know that it can only be digitized on a quantization level. And so the nearest quantization level to the sample point would fall right here, okay? And then at 0.5 seconds, at the, the next time we're taking a sample, ideally the analog to digital converter samples right here, but instead it digitizes on the nearest quantization level, which falls right here, okay? And so on and so forth for every sample point in the analog signal until you get a digital signal that looks like this green square wave. Okay, so this is with two bits of resolution, this is our representation of the analog signal. Okay, and the thing I wanna note here is that the difference between a quantized sample point and its ideal location on the analog signal, that's called quantization noise or quantization error. And the more bits of resolution you have in your ADC, your analog to digital converter, you get less of this quantization noise, right? Because the quantization level is closer to the analog signal at any given sample point. So let's see how the addition of more bits results in a better representation of the signal. So with three bits of resolution, I have two to the three quantization levels or eight quantization levels. And if we were again to spread out those quantization levels over the range of voltage points, again, 10 volts, we would get that those eight quantization levels occur every 1.25 volts. Okay, so again, we start sampling at 0.25 seconds and the nearest quantization level to the analog signal falls right here on this green dot. The next time we're sampling is at 0.5 seconds and the nearest quantization level to the analog signal at this point is right here. Same thing for 0.75 seconds, one second, and so on and so forth until now we have a three-bit digital signal 
that's representing the analog signal you could see in gray. So at this point, some people may ask, is improving my resolution the only thing that I could be doing to view a better representation of the signal? It looks like something this is digital signal is missing is more sample points. And so let's stay at three bits for one second and we'll take a look at what double the samples does to the digital signal. So instead of four samples per second, let's do eight samples per second. Over this four second record length, instead of 16 samples, we'll now have 32. And so still with three bits, this is what our digital signal will look like at eight samples per second. And you can see that we're not necessarily getting a better representation of the signal, right? And that's because the quantization noise is still the same, right? Because we, we didn't add any more quantization levels. So we're not getting closer to the analog signal at any given sample second. So to really get the best utility out of the sample points, you need to have enough quantization levels for them to take advantage of. And so let's see how eight samples per second works with four bits of resolution. So now we have four bits of resolution, which is two to the four quantization levels or 16 quantization levels. Okay, so with the addition of only one more bit, we have double the quantization levels and spread out over the 10 volts. The quantization levels occur every 0.625 volts. And as you can see, there are enough quantization levels for those sample points to take advantage of. And we're already starting to see a much better representation of the analog signal. Also, I want to point out again that uh, with the addition of more quantization levels, quantization noise is decreasing. And you can see that over here. And eventually, if you have a 12 bit ADC, you'll have two to the 12 quantization levels. That's over 4,000 levels. And with a high enough sample rate, you could get something that looks like this, which is an amazing representation of the analog signal. So just to recap, the vertical range of sample points can be seen on two to the n quantization levels. And the more of those quantization levels you have, you can see smaller units of voltage detail. Even though 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit sound super close in numbers, right? They're only separated by two bits each, they have exponentially different numbers of quantization levels. So with eight bits, we have 200, oops, go back. With eight bits, we have only 256 quantization levels. And with 12 bits, we have over 4,000. So that's 16 times more signal detail with only adding four more bits of resolution in the ADC. And you can see what that visually looks like um, proportionally to one another with the conventional 8, 10, and 12-bit oscilloscopes here. So the green is the 12-bit oscilloscope, blue is the 8-bit, and you can see you have approximately 16 times less quantization noise with 12 bits. So just some closing thoughts here. I want to reiterate that vertical resolution is solely defined by the number of bits in your ADC your analog to digital converter. The more bits of resolution in your ADC, you get exponentially more quantization levels and exponentially more signal detail. Uh, another thing that's important is timing resolution. It's defined by the sample rate. So we saw with that four bit example and the 12 bit example, we saw timing resolution and vertical resolution working together to really achieve the most signal detail possible. And we'll talk more about sample rate and timing resolution in the four webinar in April. Lastly, I wanna point out that there are several system considerations in the oscilloscope that can lower the resolution to below what the ADC resolution is. Meaning you could have a 12-bit analog to digital converter, but there are other factors in the oscilloscope that lower it below that. And so it's important to know what the trade-offs are in those system considerations. And so I've linked a white paper here that goes into some of those trade-offs and different design approaches that oscilloscope manufacturers use to achieve high resolution. 
if you're more of a visual learner, so that uh, same white paper was converted to a webinar presentation. And so I've linked that as well. It's a great webinar. And another webinar that you may find of interest is five tips to improve your oscilloscope resolution and dynamic range. So now that you guys have the oscilloscope basics of oscilloscope resolution, this webinar right here is a good part two to dive into more analysis. So where can you find these webinars? Once you guys are able to download these slides, you can click on this hyperlink right here, or you could go straight to our website, teledynelacroix.com, click on the resources tab, then events and training, and you could choose from one of our upcoming webinars that you could watch live like today, or on-demand ones. In both cases, there are various filters and search options that you guys could use to find any interest of topic. And the last thing I'll say here is in future Coffee Break webinars that I'm doing, I will do some live demos on our oscilloscopes. And the user interface for our oscilloscope is called Maui Studio. So if you guys want a chance to try the demo along with me, get some hands-on learning, uh, I would recommend downloading Maui Studio using this link right here. You can download it straight to your PC. And if you register, you'll get a 30-day free trial. But that is it for part one of this Coffee Break webinar. Um, if there are any questions, I would love to answer them now. Thanks, John. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. So again, uh, to the right of your screen, you should see a control panel. And there is a section labeled questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in there. Uh, and we'll be sure to answer them live here. Um, somebody did ask if this was recorded, and the answer is yes. Uh, the recording and slides, even though the slides are available for download right now in the um, handout section, uh, I will email them out to you uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I don't see any questions. So I am assuming that John did a great job explaining. Uh, we <laughs> do appreciate you joining us today and hope that you will join us for uh, one of our future coffee breaks. Uh, the schedule is posted right now from now through June, um, and we'll add uh, the rest of the year later on. So uh, with that, again, no questions. I'll go ahead and shut this down for today and hope to see you online uh, with us again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, John. Thank you.